All right, so our goals for today, just to go over this unit review before your test tomorrow. So we're getting down to the end of the term. We have two more smaller lessons. There won't be another unit test. So we'll do those two lessons on Wednesday and Thursday. And then next week we'll study for the final Monday, Tuesday. And then hopefully we'll schedule you to take your final exams at your school, either Wednesday or Thursday. I'm gonna send out an email today to all of your coaches and your CCRs to get with them about scheduling your final exam. So your final exam has to be taken on paper and pencil. You only get a calculator and a reference sheet. You don't get to use your notes. And let's see, it is a time test. I believe you get 80 minutes unless you have like an IEP or a 504 for extended time. There are 20, hold on. 25 questions. So it's not a really lengthy exam. And the first half of it is actually multiple choice. So the first 15 questions, so a little bit over half, are all multiple choice questions. But again, make sure you show your work because if you have correct work and the incorrect answer, I can still give you partial credit. So a little forewarning, we are going to take our final next Wednesday, Thursday, because that gives me Monday, Tuesday to collect them all grade them, and then I have to send them over to Ivy Tech. All right, so for our last unit test, unit four, we're going to graph these functions. So we're given two exponential functions. For this first function here, I can look at the B value. Since it's less than one, I know that this is a decay problem. So actually, when I look at my multiple choice answers, I only want ones that are decay. So when I look at this one, this one's decay. But when I get to letter B, that's a growth problem. I know it's automatically out. Letter C is decay. When I get to letter D, again, another exponential growth problem, so I can automatically mark that one off. So I know already, without doing really any work, that it's either got to be letter C or letter A. So if you remember from last week, we found some ordered pairs using negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, just by making an xy table. So we're gonna do one half, one fourth, excuse me. One fourth to the negative second power minus two. So we're gonna be careful typing that into our calculators. One fourth to the negative second power minus two gives me 14. And then I could keep going down my list, change the negative two to a negative one. If I have one fourth to the negative one power minus two, I get an answer of two. If I plug in zero, I get negative one. If I plug in positive one, I get negative 1.75. If I plug in positive two, I get negative 1.9375. So it seems to be getting closer to negative two there. So then I'm just gonna look at my graphs. I would first off start with negative two, 14, and negative one, two, zero, negative one. So I would look for those three order pairs just because I know they're going to be at exact intersections. 
So if I look at letter A, since it's up here at the top, negative 2, 14 is right here. So notice these are labeled by twos. So negative 2, 14 is right there. Negative 1 would be about right here in the middle. If I go up, that's going to be at positive 2, just like it should be. And then 0, negative 1 right there. So, so far, I've got three points on the line that I was looking at. So that one's really close, if not the correct answer. So then I'm gonna look down at my other option because remember we narrowed it down to these two. If I look here at the ordered pair negative two 14 is right here, my line is not crossing there. So I know automatically that this doesn't contain negative two 14. So this can't be an answer. So it has to be letter A. Sometimes you'll need to zoom in on your graphs using your computer. I know my computer, if I take two fingers and I spread them apart, it'll zoom in for me. So make sure you're doing that to make sure you're getting the correct graphs on your test tomorrow. All right, question number two. We have f of x equals two to the x power minus one. Here, my b value is greater than one, so this is gonna be growth. And just like the last question, this graph isn't growth, it's decay. Letter B is growth, so it could be a possibility, and letter C is decay. So I've already narrowed it down to one of two answers without even graphing anything at all. Well, we're gonna go ahead and make us an XY table. Negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. And then we're going to take 2 to the negative 2 power minus 1. That's going to give us negative 0.75. Again, working our way down the table. just using our calculator to compute these values. So here we've got some exact order pairs we want to look at first. We have 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 3. So if I look at letter B, I have zero, zero. I have one, one. But then when I get to two, three would be right here. Whoops. Hold on. One, one. So actually, if I, I graph that second point wrong, two, I, oops. So zero, zero, one, one would be right here in the center, and then two, three would be right there. So this graph is not at the correct coordinates. So it can't be this one, but let's go ahead and double check letter D. Zero, zero, one, one here in the middle, and two, three right here in the middle. This one lines up with all three of those points. We could also go ahead and confirm the first two points, the negative one, negative one half, and then the negative two, negative 0.75. Those are both over here. So this is actually our graph here, letter D. Questions three and four, they don't give us a graph. They want us to graph them on our own. So we're gonna graph y equals two x, two to the x plus two. So we're gonna start off by making an x, y table.
And then we're going to, again, use our calculators to plug in these X values. So two to the negative second power plus two in our calculator. That in my calculator is gonna give me 2.25. So I'm gonna erase this, whoops, too much. Negative one, two point five, zero, So looking at this one, again, so we can look at our B value since it's greater than one. It's gonna be growth. And then as you'll see, if we look down our table, we started at negative two and we went all the way to positive two, our numbers are growing. So we're just gonna graph these five ordered pairs. So negative two, 2.25, Going to be right there, negative one, 2.5, 0, 3, 1, 4, and 2, 6. If we wanted a more accurate graph, we could keep plugging in numbers. So we could do 3 and get 10. Let's see. If we did 4, we would get 18. So you see how just using our calculator to fill out some more numbers is going to give us a more reasonable graph here. So then we're gonna connect the dots the best we can. And then know that over here on the left-hand side, our graph is going to level off. So it's gonna flatten out over here at the left. So this would be my final graph. Question number four is very similar, except our B value here is less than one. So this is gonna be a decay problem. So when we fill out our table, our numbers are going to go down in values. So now we're going to make our XY table just like we did on the last problem. We're going to use those same five values. Again, those just are in the center there to kind of give us an idea of the overall graph. We could use any numbers we wanted, as many numbers as we wanted, like we added points on the last time to get a more accurate answer. So this one we're going to start out with one third to the negative second power plus one, which is going to give us 10. We're going to edit our calculators, change that to a negative one. It's going to give us four. I'm going to change it to zero to get two. Change it to one, we get 1.3 repeating. Change it to two and we get 1.1. So it appears as we head to the right, as we decay, we're approaching one. So then we're gonna graph these five points. Again, if you wanted to add points to it, 
to get a more accurate answer you could, but if you go to the left here and you plug in negative three, it actually gives you neg or 28, which will not fit on your graph. So negative two, 10 here, negative one, four, zero, two, one and one third, and two, one and point one repeating. So now we're gonna connect these best we can. Again, I'm not an artist, so give me plus I'm trying to do this on my computer. And again, your graph's gonna level off right there on the right hand side this time. So we're decaying. We're gonna decay and get closer to, in this case, positive one. And that's it for our graph on number four. For examples five and six, we're going to solve these equations. We're going to round to the nearest 10,000. Very important that you know what this means because this is how it's worded on your Ivy Tech final exam. So I didn't just pick that out for no reason. There is a definite reason. Ivy Tech tells you to round to the nearest 10,000th, which is four decimal places. So you've got to have four decimal places. Some of you did not do this on the assignment. So make sure you're following all the instructions and rounding correctly. All right, so question number five, our overall objective is to get X by itself, but X is stuck up here as an exponent. So in order to do that, we're gonna to have to use logarithms to get it out. But before we can use a logarithm to get that X out of the exponent position, we're going to have to isolate that 11 to the X plus eight term. So in order for us to isolate this term right here, we need to get rid of the minus five. So we're gonna add five to both sides. So now we have 11 to the X plus eight equals 29. Now we can't subtract the eight. We can divide by 11. At this point, we're going to have to rewrite in exponential form or in logarithmic form. We're in exponential, we wanna to go to log form. So remember we have our base, our exponent and our Y. And we want to rewrite this as log base B. So log base 11 of Y, 29, equals our exponent, which is X plus 8. Now we know in order to solve this, we need to get X by itself by subtracting eight from both sides. So I'm gonna subtract eight from both sides. Remember the eight cannot be subtracted from the 29. The 29 is attached to the log, so if it helps you put parentheses around it, put parentheses around it. So we have log base 11 of 29 minus eight equals X. Then we need to type this into our calculators. Now remember, our calculators don't know anything other than base 10. So we've got to use the change of base formula. 
the change of base formula would mean that we're going to take log 29 divided by log 11. And then we're going to subtract 8 from it. So remember, your, the base of the log always goes to the bottom of your fraction. So log 29 divided by log 11. Minus 8 is going to give us our answer. So take a moment and type this in your calculator, making sure that you know how to do it. Again, you cannot use your phone as your calculator on the test day. So you need to know how to type this into a standard scientific calculator. So if you type this part into your calculator first, you're gonna get negative, oops, negative one point, oh, positive one. Positive 1.4042714333. Remember, we never round until we're on the very last step. So you're gonna write all that out. Minus eight to get your answer. Negative 6.5957285. And then we're going to round it to the nearest 10,000, which is four decimal places. So if I look, four decimal places is here. So negative 6.5957. When I look at the number after that, it's a two. So we're not going to have any rounding. We're just going to mark these last five numbers off. So negative 6.5957 is our final answer, which is letter D, B as in boy. Question number nine, or number nine, number six that starts with nine is very similar to question number five. So again, we have this scenario here where we have a variable that's in an exponent and we've got to get it down. In order to get it down, we need to isolate that term, use logarithms to change the log form, and then solve for n. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring the problem down. We're going to have 9 times 19 n plus 9 equals 8. In order to get this term with the n plus 9 by itself, we're going to take and divide in order to get rid of this 9 here. So we've got to get rid of that 9 before we can do anything else. So we're going to divide both sides by 9. Those are going to cancel each other out. And we have 19 to the n plus 9 on the left hand side equals. Now, remember on the last problem, I told you we don't want to do any rounding until the very last step. So if you would take 9 or 8 and divide it by 9, you're going to get 0.8 repeating, which you would probably round if you were going to write down in your problem. So we do not want to type that in our fraction to write a decimal. We're going to leave it as 8 over 9 until we get all the way to our final answer. So now we have an exponential equation. We're going to label the parts in order to write it in log form. So here's my base, here's my exponent, and here's my y. So now I'm going to have log base b, which is 19 of y, 8 ninths, equals x 
in this case, n plus nine. Remember to get in by itself as our next step, we would subtract nine from both sides. That's going to give us n equals log base 19 of eight ninths minus nine. And just like the last time, we can't type this logarithm in as it stands because our calculators, for the most part, just solve one log base 10. So we're going to use that change of base formula. We're going to take log of 8 over 9 or 8 divided by 9 divided by log of the base, which is 19 minus 9. And again, you can type one piece in at a time. You can type all of this in first and then subtract 9. If you do that, again, you don't want to do any rounding. So we're, oops. That would give us negative 0 0.04000018599 minus nine. So in this case, when we combine here, we're going to have n equals negative 9.04000186. So again, we're going to round to the nearest four decimal places. So four decimal places would be these four. When I look at the number after, it's zero. So no rounding to be done. We're just going to mark those last four off. So negative 9.0400, which is this one. So here, since the last two digits were zeros, they didn't write them. A lot of times, you'll have those zeros still written there. All right, questions seven and eight, we're identifying the domain and the range of each logarithm. So remember domain of a logarithm, whatever's inside these parentheses here must be greater than zero, always must be positive. So four X plus 17 has to be greater than zero. Doesn't matter what it is, as long as whatever x value you plug in there creates a positive number. So we're going to take this and we're going to solve for x. So we're going to subtract 17 from both sides. So 4x is greater than negative 17. Divide by 4 on both sides. So x has to be greater than negative 17 over 4. If x is greater than negative 17 over 4, that means your x values start at negative 17 over 4, and they increase all the way to positive infinity. Oops. So our domain, negative 17 to positive infinity. Our range is always the same, negative infinity to positive infinity every single time. So we're just looking for these two things here in our answers, which lines up with letter C.
you've got to be careful on these because a lot of times there are correct answers that have been flipped the domain in the range you'll see that par d has negative infinity to positive infinity in the domain and not in the range so remember range is all real numbers which is negative infinity to positive infinity every single time Number eight, we're still doing the same thing. No information in this matters except for what's inside our parentheses. So one minus two X must be positive. So it's gotta be greater than zero. This time I'm going to solve for X by subtracting one from both sides. Negative two X is greater than negative one. Beside it divided, I'm going to divide both sides by negative two. But remember, since we divided by a negative, when we bring our sign down, it must flip. This time it's X is less than, and then negative one divided by negative two is positive one half. So this time X is less than one half. That's any number to the left which would be negative infinity to positive one half as your domain. As I said earlier, your range is always going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. So this is going to give us an answer letter A. All right, questions nine and 10. We are expanding some logarithms. So in this case, I have log of y times z squared times the cube root of x. So first thing I want you to notice is that this is multiplication and this is multiplication. So we have three things being multiplied together, which means I need three logarithms separated by addition. So log base 10, since there's no base written, it's understood to be 10 of y plus log base 10 of z squared plus log base 10 of the cube root of x. Log base y is going to, or log of y is going to stay the same. For the second logarithm here, the two, as the exponent's gonna get brought down in front. So we're gonna have plus two log of z. And the tricky term here, the cube root of x. Remember that the cube root of x is x to the one third power. The one third power can get brought down in front of the log. So plus one third log x. And that's going to be our final answer. Looking here, the only one that matches this one. The only thing they've done differently with this, they took the one third and multiplied it by log of x. So one log x divided by three which is the same thing as we have down here.
Number 10, very, very similar. Again, we are expanding. So again, in this case, we have multiplication again. So we're gonna separate into three logs. One of them is gonna have five, actually four logs, because we've got multiplication here again. So a five, a three, a five, and the square root of eight. So we're gonna have log base nine of five. plus log base nine of three plus log base nine of five plus log base nine of eight to the one half power. Remember the square root of eight is the same as eight to the one half power. So in this case, we actually have some like terms. We have log base nine to five, log base nine to five. We're gonna go ahead and add those together. If we add them together, we're gonna have two log base nine of fives because there's one plus one. We're adding them together to get two plus log base nine of three plus, and then on this last term here, the one half is going to come down out front using that power property log base nine of eight, which is letter A. So again, that one half is the same thing as log base nine of eight divided by two. Last two questions, solving logarithmic equations. Remember, before you can rewrite these, you must combine the logarithms using the properties. So we need to combine these two logarithms since they're being combined with addition. We're gonna have to combine them using multiplication. So we're gonna have log base 10, of nine times x squared plus one equals one. Now you could go ahead and multiply the nine times x squared and the nine times one. So that's gonna give you log base 10 of nine x squared plus nine equals one. At this point, you're down to a single logarithm. When you get down to a single logarithm, you want to rewrite this in exponential form. So you're going to want to label the base. Here, there's no base written, so it's understood to be 10. Y is whatever's in parentheses, and X, the exponent, is the number by itself or the terms by themselves on the other hand side of the equal sign. You will be given the conversion between exponential and logarithmic form on the reference sheet. So now we actually want to do that rewriting. So we're going to have b to the x power, so 10 to the first power, 
equals y, which is 9x squared plus 9. So now that we have this, we want to proceed and simplify this. So 10 to the first power is 10. So 10 equals 9x squared plus 9. We want to go ahead and subtract to get rid of the 9. So we're going to have 1 equals 9x squared. We're going to divide both sides by 9. Oops. That's going to give us 1 9th equals x squared. In order to get x squared by itself, we're going to go ahead and square root both sides. When we when we square root both sides, remember we're putting in that square root symbol. So we've got to put the plus or minus in front of it. So on the right hand side, we've got the square root of x squared, which is just x. And then on the right hand side, or the left hand side, excuse me, we need to take the square root of 1 9th. Well, what that really means is we're going to take the square root of 1 and we're going to take the square root of 9. So plus or minus the square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 9 is 3. So we're square rooting both the numerator and the denominator. So now we have x equals positive one third or negative one third. Since we have two answers, so we have x equals positive one third and x equals negative one third because of that plus or minus sign, we need to check to make sure both solutions work. In order to make sure both of these work, we need to plug them back in right here. There's nothing to plug into right here, so we don't have to worry about it. So if we would take 1 third squared plus 1, we're going to end up with 1 ninth plus 1, which is going to be positive. So that's going to work. If we make it negative 1 third, well, when we square negative 1 third, it's still going to be a positive. One ninth. So both solutions actually work in this case for our final answer. So question 12 is going to work out pretty similarly to the last one. The first thing we want to do, combine like terms here. So we're going to combine our like terms. In this case, we have subtraction between the logarithms. So the quotient property tells us that we're going to have log base 6 of 2x squared divided by 2 equals Now that we're down to one single logarithm, we want to label and rewrite in exponential form. So 
So if I rewrite this in exponential form, my base, my x, no, my y, and my x. So six squared equals two x squared over two. Well, six squared can be replaced with 36. In this case, on the right hand side, there's actually two things you could do. You actually could have done it earlier. When you look at this fraction here, you have two in the numerator and two in the denominator. You could just cancel those out. Or you can multiply by two and then divide by two in the next step. That's fine too. So now we have 36 equals x squared. We're going to, just like we did in the last problem, insert the square root, putting the plus or minus sign out front. In this case, x equals plus or minus the square root of 36, which is positive 6. So now we need to check both of these in order to see whether they work. Remember, we're going to plug them in oops, right here for x. There's no x right here, so it's not required. When I plug in 6, uh, 6 squared is 36 times 2 is 72, definitely positive. And the same thing's true if we plug in negative 6 and then square it and multiply it by 2. Negative 6 squared becomes positive. And in this case, we have answers x equals 6 and x equals negative 6.